All right. Um, we'll start with you, but if you've got something you want to add to the question, feel free to throw it in. Okay. And we'll just kind of go back and forth, whatever it is that, uh, um, whatever thought comes to mind in response is cool with me. Can I get you to say and spell your first and last name? Right now? Yep. Kathy Leach, K-A-T-H-Y-L-E-A-C-H. And Nancy Wells, N-A-N-C-Y. W-E-L-L-S. All right. Ladies, let's talk about 1972. But before we talk about 72, there has to be something a little bit before that. So how did you get interested in Philmont coming here, being a part of all this? Tell us the beginning of the story. Through my family, I came to Philmont. My brother was already on staff, my older brother. And growing up in Laredo, Texas, if you've ever been there, it is desert. We have mesquite and cactus, and the highest point anywhere around is an overpass. We came out here for the first time. There were green trees. It was so lush. There was running water. There's no running water in Laredo. It, the whole land is so captivating. Our family kept coming back and back. I actually, my first job out here was at Cimarron Girls Camp for two years. I never dreamed of working at Philmont. I really never did. I enjoyed my brother's stories. I had two brothers by that time working at Philmont. Out of the blue, I had already graduated from college. I was trying to make my way in the world, trying desperately to own a car, but I couldn't afford it, so I had two jobs trying to save money. At that point, the phone call from Philmont came, and Gosh, two jobs or going to Philmont, it wasn't much of a choice. It <laughs> took me all of probably a day to decide. Now, you say the call came. From, how did they know about you, and how did they know to call you as opposed to anybody well, else? They called my dad, and I have no idea if I was the second woman on the list or the 50th woman on the list. I just know they called my, the camp director, Mr. Davis, called my dad because that's the number on file they had for my brothers. I was actually at, up in Austin working, and my dad called me, and, and we talked it over, and I, I told him, you know, my grand plans to make a million dollars working two jobs. <laughs> and he said, yeah, why don't you go to Philmont? So that's what I did. Very cool. So Nancy, how about you? The story that led up to you getting here the first time, what was that for you? I came with my family a couple times. My dad came down for trainings. And so I was in the little kids program and then I was in the older girls program. And my older brother, Rusty, came down and he was, um, well, he came down for junior leader training the year of the flood, so he didn't get to take it. And he went to Outward Bound School in 1966 1967, he graduated, he came down as a ranger. 1968, I went to Outward Bound School, and in 69, they opened up exploring to girls in Denver. I thought it was all over the United States, but apparently it wasn't. And so they hired Rusty at 17, so why wouldn't they hire me at 17? And so I joined Explorers at midnight on January 1st, 1969, um, you know, at, at the stroke of it is now 1969, you can join Explorers. I joined and immediately requested a uh, application and um, immediate, well, within a month had my rejection letter, my first, but I had been to Outward Bound School, so I knew if Rusty was um, qualified I was qualified. I had been backpacked as a kid and stuff. Um, and so Joe Davis said, you know, Philmont isn't ready for women. I was like, okay, you got a year. Went to college and um, 1970, or probably December of 69, sent in my second letter of application and got my second rejection letter back. Very nice letter from Joe Davis saying, Thank you for applying. Philmont isn't ready for girls. 1971, I applied again, got my third rejection letter. And I'm thinking, okay, you guys have had a few years to get Philmont ready. 
I'm coming. And in 1972, or probably end of 71, I applied for the fourth time, got a letter from Joe Davis saying, you're a nice gal. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate your, your, your continued you know, pursuit of this, but Philmont isn't ready for girls yet. And then I got a, another letter from, I don't remember his name, but somebody has my letter, my rejection letter. And he, he said kind of the same thing, you know, we're not ready for girls, but thank you for applying. And then I got the phone call from Joe Davis. And Rusty had been here as a ranger most of that time, and he had started the, helped start the Kit Carson program. And um, so they had hit our, our parents' phone number. My parents in Denver got the call. Uh, they gave Joe my phone number. Joe called me, and I did not discuss it with my parents. I just said, yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, canceled my, my part of my finals. Took them when I got back to school, didn't do too well. Uh, took some of them early, did better on those, and ended up at Philmont. Two very different stories, and two really cool stories in and of themselves. Yeah. So what was it like that first year for the two of you? Well, we didn't know what to expect. In retrospect, I think Mr. Davis had good intentions. He did not really share his plans with the summer staff. And they were, <laughs> they were caught at a loss of how to adjust, how to plan. So essentially there was no planning. They put us in the same progression that a ranger goes through, you know, ranger training and then we left ranger training and they faced the realization that we had to get crews and they got cold feet. They, there was this big debate. Should we ask a crew if they want a women ranger? Should we give the women ranger another job maybe that doesn't involve taking out a, an all male crew? They didn't even know what to call us. There was some debate, well, let's call them rangerettes. And, and I, I wanted to say, well, do we get pom-poms? <laughs> oh my gosh, and, and finally, there was a, a sector director that was very um, articulate and very to the point. And he said, if we don't want somebody that qualified, why, why would we go look for somebody less and, and invite all those issues? And he said, they, they will be treated just like the regular ranger staff. A bus pulls up, a crew comes out, they're assigned a ranger, and if, they're, if Nancy's time is up or my time is, is up for that crew, then that's who they get. And they will be called rangers, thank God. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was a struggle, and, and it, it reflected into our housing, it reflected into our orientation, there were, I never met the full ranger leadership. I never did. I, I, I would walk into the ranger office and see strange faces and I had no clue. I didn't know how to, to I didn't know what to ask. I didn't know what I was supposed to know. And uh, so it, it was, to me, it was very isolating. I didn't feel, we were housed far, as far away as they could find from Ranger City. Uh, there were no, there was not much structure. We didn't have ranger meetings. I never saw my training ranger again. I never got evaluated for the two years I was at Philmont. You never so, got evaluated? No. Oh, wow. So I was adrift, essentially, on my own. Make, stand up and be counted or go away. And we're, we're not going to help you. We'll, we'll recognize you. It, it, that was the feeling. I'm sure there were, there were guys that, that are respected what Nancy and I did. But if, if you just look at, at the feeling that comes through, it was, uh, you're on your own. And by the way, you have black, um, a target on your back <laughs> and we're watching you. Yeah, so. yeah, don't, don't step out of line because we will cancel the program. And how was your first year here? Well, as Kathy said, uh, they said they were ready for us, but they weren't. We started out in PTC in a, in a tent, 
we went out for ranger training and um, we uh, when we came back I don't remember if we put up a tent or if they put up a tent for us between the Mormon contingency and the Catholic priest's cabin and um, yeah my our first crews were co-ed they wanted us to stay out for the 14 days because they really didn't know what to do with us Kathy's crew allowed her to stay with them for 14 days my crew did not and I came back and uh, was not going to get a crew so I went out to um, the hunting lodge for that period of time and I was out there actually learning axe throwing <laughs> And baking on baking homemade bread on the uh, wood stove and stuff, and and rangers would come out. You know, we'd spend the night telling ghost stories, and I'd be in one in one of the bedrooms there, off of the kitchen, and they'd be in the one off of the living room. And um, when they finally decided that they were going to send us out with crews, they called me back in, and I got my first crew, and out we went. Um, I was befriended by. Jerry Dennis um, right up as soon as I got there and so I got to know him and because of that I got to know his friends and you know kind of hung out with those guys and um, just you know tried to make connections but we, you know we we definitely were isolated we could come down here and take showers or to the volunteer training center or we could use the staff house or we could use the infirmary. And I think that's where we use toilets. I don't remember what toilets we used, but I remember the staff house. The staff house. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was challenging and you felt like you were under a microscope all the time. And, you know, we were, it was pretty well put, I don't know if it was insinuated or put to us that we weren't supposed to fraternize with the male rangers, well, that wasn't happening. But, um, you know, I, I was probably a little more obnoxious than Kathy. And but, you know, th the other hand was it, was it was wonderful to be part of the Philmont program. I loved the crews. I had heard all my life through my brothers about the patrol system. I was so excited to see how it would work on the trail at Philmont to see the crew leaders take up their leadership and get things done. And if, if I had any skill that I really, really wanted to learn so I could help the crews, it would be leadership. It wouldn't be campcraft. It would be how to work as a team and, yeah. and how to, to have a, a working camaraderie to get you through the tough times. I never felt, that Nancy might have a different point of view, but I, I never felt hostility from any crew I had. And uh, um, they, they might have been polite and not really uh, excited, but there was no hostility. So it was, that's, that's the part I want to remember. Yeah. So you made it through the first year. What is probably, outside of being the first year, and just in your case particularly, the, the only year. accomplishment over uh, that period of time, What's the biggest takeaway you personally got out of that experience? Besides I can scream <laughs> when being attacked by a bear. I, I never had a, a nightmare after that that I, I couldn't scream. Before that, I'd have nightmares. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. After that, I never had those nightmares again. But just being able to watch as Kathy said, the kids take that leadership skill. And I would take my knitting on the trail with me because I'm kind of a control freak. And, and I really wanted them to be doing the stuff and figuring out who can do what, what are your strengths, how can you work together, how are you gonna work through these problems and stuff. And so, you know, that whole leading from behind and then get into camp and go off and sit under a tree and knit pot holders to take to give to the back staff or backcountry staff. Um, 
kept me out of their hair and I could just observe and um, if they needed to ask me a question, they could come ask me a question. But, you know, if they took the wrong trail, keeping my mouth shut and saying, you know, it, I will follow you those extra miles. Uh, hopefully you will figure it out before four o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and if you don't, I'm here with you. And um, if you need to ask me something, ask. Otherwise, you're going to be without me real soon, and so you let me know what you need. Um, yeah, just helping them to develop those skills and understand that they have those skills, and including, you know, the little ones. They, they can do it. And what was your biggest takeaway from that first summer? First summer? I, it's, it's hard to say, I, I guess relief that I got through it and I had a few more friends, you know, just, it, they were hard earned, but I felt like I had a support system that it, I was willing to come back. I don't, I'm surprised <laughs> really because it, it is kind of tough to be on the front line like that. The, the, the crews make Philmont for me. The cruise. If, if I had had a been invited to work in the ranger office the next year, I would have said no, because there were no crews to interact with. Yeah, that that is the magic of Belmont to me. And you did one year. You did two. Mm -hmm. Why only one? Well, I was going to work for four years, but the University of Montana. My degree is in wildlife biology, the aquatics option. I had to go and take a, a, sum, a sum, summer semester at the um, biological station. And it was either the summer I was at Philmont or it was the next summer. I got hired at Philmont, so it, it was the next summer. And it's the two years, what was, did you, did you kick your bucket list and you were happy or did you just decide it was time to move on with life? I realized at that point, and this, this might sound a little bit harsh, but Philmont was too small a box for me. It, it held me back, it cramped my style, it, it limited me, it did not uh, help me grow as a person. It asked me to do things that, or, or ac actually it just ignored me. Um, I, I tried my very best to do everything I could to promote women at Philmont. I, on my own initiative, I started the Kit Carson Women Program. I found the 10 women to be on the trek. I approached the camp director and got his permission. Within two weeks, those, those young women only had two weeks to come to Philmont. And, uh, you know, their fitness showed it, but they were so excited. And it was wonderful to see it, if, if I was going to give you a an overused expression they took to Philmont like ducks to water. It was just a wonderful experience for them. And then all that was nipped in the bud at the end of the summer. The women were not going to be allowed to hike in the back country, not be allowed to take out regular crews. They could work. Now this would be my third, if I had come back my third summer, we would only be allowed to take out the co-ed crews, which had a window they could come beginning of the summer and end of the summer. In the middle, all that was left were the women crews or the young girls from PTC you know, that would go out on a five-day trek. And we, have, we all each have different experiences uh, to, to talk about. But when, when I threw in the towel, the situation was the girls could only go to the Zastro area. I don't know what that meant, how far we could go, but we could not be seen on the trails. And th there was no program. I mean, you have girls for five days with no program, what do you do? I thought that was a very big ask and, and not so much gratitude. And I wasn't interested, so I left. So you're obviously two <laughs> incredible pioneers in this. What do you tell young ladies today? You, you started this, it's been 50 years. What do you tell them today? Well, 
you know, 50 years of thinking, and especially this past year getting ready for the reunion, and really past two years because I found all the 10 women that I had rangered with my second year, I, I couldn't remember hardly any of them. I didn't know, I wasn't in contact. I had found all 10 women of my Kit Carson crew. I didn't know how to get hold of any of them. So that, that's 20 people I found, deep desire to reconnect. And what Philmont seems to me is, is just a great door to discovery. It is how we all find, find uh, that part of ourselves, how we all grow. Yeah. It's, it's one of a kind. I'm sorry, Harold. No. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'll tell you a story afterwards that is not related to Philmont, but it's related to me and my daughters. How about you, Nancy? What do you tell young ladies today? Um, if, if I have the opportunity, I tell them, if you want to do it, go do it. You know, go, go backpack. Or if, if you want to be at the sea base, apply. Go do it. You know, develop the skills. And where I live, most of the girls, you know, do their own hunting and packing out of their elk and stuff. Um, and we don't really have a scouting program there right now. Um, but I, I encourage girls, however, you know, get involved. If they're interested in Philmont, man, I, I, I'd send them in a heartbeat. I mean, this was, was everything to me. This was my dream. It's a great and place of growth, of personal growth, yeah. of personal discovery. And, and the beautiful scenery is a bonus. Yeah. But the, the, and it's a, a, a common experience. The struggles you have on the trail, I have on the trail. Some yeah. places are, are harder for me. Some places uh, that I fly up, you may struggle. So they're different in that respect. But we all, we all share that. We all are all trying to, to get to the finish line and, and bring our, the rest of the crew with us. So it's both a personal and a, a team experience. And it, it's so unique. I don't know any other place that combines all those components. It's, you, you can't pass it up. I guess that's what I would tell them. Do whatever you can to come here and experience it. And then once you, you see, maybe you'll decide it's for you. Maybe you'll be some like, our, some of our women rangers have worked here seven years, eight years, nine years. It is a deeply meaningful experience for these women that come to film out. Yeah. So anything that you'd like to add that I didn't ask you about your experiences well, here? I, I had great friendships with the people on staff, with the guys on staff. Uh, we had wonderful friendships. And the staff did not discriminate against us. I mean, you know, other than not telling us what we're doing, but uh, I wander around in the dark a lot. Um, but they, they didn't, they, they treated me the same as everybody else. And in the back country, same thing, you know. Any difficulties I had, it was with crew and those we got through. Um, it was never with staff. And that was the staff everywhere that I went. And that was wonderful because otherwise you are alone. And Kathy and I didn't get to spend much time together because our schedules did not align. And so, you know, we were minimally there for each other. Um, so yeah, it was the, the support from the other people was, was wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah.